Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are on Jupiter's fourth moon. They've just captured two criminals and are racing in spacesuits away from a grounded interstellar ship. Now keep that rock between us and the ship, Happy. Yes, sir. Commander, where's that shadow coming from? Uh, look up above us. Look, the rocket, there's a big crate right over our heads. Ben's holding it in the gravity beam. Sir, there's an explosive in that crate. Keep running, Happy. If Ben cut that beam off, the crate will fall and we'll be scattered all over Jupiter's fourth moon. <laughs> Today's thrilling adventure of Space Patrol. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are in the Terra 5, cruising near the orbit of Jupiter. With them is Gordon Spangler, a criminal who's been attempting to escape to another solar system. Buzz has recovered the electronic translator by which it's possible to communicate with certain planets in other parts of the galaxy. While Happy guards Spangler, Buzz tunes the hyperspace receiver to scan space phone frequencies from Arctona, a planetary system 75 light years away. If we could only pick up that Arctona space center. So couldn't we try to contact them? That's what Spangler did. Yes, I know, but we don't want to get the United Planets involved with a strange solar system, especially over one of our own criminals. What's the matter, Corey? Don't you want Arctona to find out that you're trying to keep citizens from engaging in free interstellar trade? Free trade? That's great coming from you. Uh, Happy's right. You've nothing to trade except what you've stolen from honest companies. And you know nothing about Arctona. Their ships may come here and try to conquer us. That's the kind of risk you have to take if you're going in for interstellar travel. If we're going to take risks, they'll be necessary ones. And for the good of the entire solar system, not for the profit of one gang of pirates. Arctona Space Center, station GR-98. There it is, sir. Arctona Space Center, calling unidentified ship at galactic point 75 Hyperspace Vector 16-9-43. Spaceship at Galactic Point 75 Vector 16-9-43. Go ahead. In reference to your previous message, the High Command is now considering your request for rescue from your present position. The Command would like further details on how you happen to be stranded in this remote part of the galaxy. That condition has now been corrected. You are no longer stranded? The original report was an error. Well, then you wish me to inform the Arctona High Command that the distress call is canceled. Is that correct? Yes. The person who first contacted you is a criminal. He's a citizen of the United Planets of this solar system. I see. As Commander-in-Chief of the United Planets Space Patrol, my apologies to your High Command and to the Arctona Space Center for this inconvenience. One thing more. In the previous contact, there was mention of the metal electronium the High Command might be interested in a trade agreement. Well, my job is law enforcement in the solar system. I have no authority to make any statement on interstellar trade. I'll report to the heads of my government and recommend that they make an attempt to contact Arctrona by hyperspace or phone. I see. And you are... Commander Corey of the United Planets Space Patrol. Thank you, Commander. I will relay your message to the High Command. Arctrona Space Center, up. He sure seemed anxious to set up trade with us, Commander. Yes, there must be a serious shortage of plutonium on Arctona. You're a fool, Corey. You could make yourself a nice, tidy fortune on this site. You mean unofficially, Spangler? Of course. Why, Arctona might give you materials worth millions of credits for every shipload of plutonium. I'm not interested, Spangler. Well, someday you'll regret this attitude. Keep an eye on him, Hap. I'll set a vector for Terra. Yes, sir. The sooner we get this character in a rehab center, the better. Hap. Yes, sir? Now we'll dodge Spangler for a while if you want to get in a little time at the controls. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, couldn't we lock Spangler up in a compartment? I'm not taking any chances, Ham. One of us is going to be watching him all the time. You, you flatter me, Commander. No, well, it's not flattery, believe me. It's just that we know that a rat can gnaw his way out of almost anything. Okay, Hap, take over. Thank you, sir. 
Boy, this new rocket cockpit is one sweet hunk of engineering. Yes, Captain. After we put Spangler where he belongs, we'll give it a real tryout in interstellar space. You know where I'd like to go? To one of those double stars like uh, Algo or Sika. Uh, I'd like to see where the... Smoking rockets, where did that come from? Stay right where you are, Spangler. The spaceship. Look at the size of it. From another solar system, huh? It must have come out of hyperspace just this instant. Oh, according to the reading on the view scope, it's twice the size of our largest cargo ship. Call the space phone scanner. Have to see if they can pick up a signal. Yes, sir. Commander, don't take any chances. Fire at them first. And just a minute ago, you were giving us a brave pep talk about interstellar trade. Come on, get back out. Attention. This is Captain Tekocha of the Arctrona Merchant Fleet. Commander, they're from Arctrona. Hold it, thank This ship was dispatched from Arctrona in answer to your distress call. Watch our pal, Hattie. Yes, sir. Men the Corey aboard Terra 5, the Captain Tokoja aboard Artrona Merchant Ship. This ship is not in distress. But a distress call was picked up from this approximate position. Yes. We've already explained the situation to Artrona Space Center. The call was an error. There's no trouble at all. It was my understanding that a shipload of Latronium would be paid for rescue. Your Space Center has the full details. I suggest you check with them. According to the Galactic Code... Any ship answering a distress call is entitled to salvage privileges. Well, as you can see, there's nothing to salvage. Not yet. However, a promise of a cargo was made. A cargo of Latronium. As I suggested before, contact Arctronus Space Center. When I last talked to them, there was no mention that a ship had been sent here. No, we were not sent. We came voluntarily. On what we thought was a mission of mercy. We acted in good faith. Well, you certainly have a point. In all honor, you shouldn't go back empty-handed. Then we get the latronium? Well, the man who promised you the latronium is a thief. It isn't his to give. That may be. But we didn't hesitate to fill our part of the bargain. I realize that. All I'm saying is wait till I contact the leaders of my government. They'll contact our trona and work out something to your advantage. Give me five minutes. Is that your final decision? Uh, Captain Tekoja, please try to understand. I'm trying to help you. I'll contact you again in five minutes. Corey out. Oh, these Arctronians are certainly persistent. I'm going to call the Secretary General on his private frequency hat. Corey, listen. I, I don't like the looks of their ship. They aren't going to wait around for a lot of rest, tape. Eh? Just remember, you started this. Yes, and I'm offering you a way out. I know where there is some Litronium. Give it to them and let them go. I can't. Commander Corey aboard Terrified, calling the Secretary General at Terra Headquarters. Commander Corey calling the Secretary General. Excuse me, Commander. Something's wrong with the transmitter. I don't think the signal's getting out. You're right, Hap. The output current has dropped nearly to zero. Yeah. That our trolling ship is closing in. Brace yourself for about six Gs. We're going to blast away from here. I told you not to trust Shut them. up, Spangler. Have if that ship comes after us. Give them a warning blast with the atom cannon. Yes, sir. No, they're coming in fast. When we cut loose, they'll get their nose torched by our rocket. Commander, what's wrong? Our power's gone. We're in free fall. And that ship's right on top of us. I'll give them a warning shot with the atom cannon. It won't fire. I warned you, Commander. Captain Tekoja to Commander Corey. Your ship is completely helpless. All your power has been neutralized by a beam from my ship. However, your space phone will operate over the short distance between us. Do you hear me? All right, Tekoja. What do you want? I'm going to join airlocks with your ship. And I'm coming aboard to talk business. You're not going to gain anything by these tactics. I assure you I won't lose anything, Commander. If anything happens to me while I'm aboard your ship, my crew will destroy you. They've joined airlock, sir. Now see what you've done, Corey. You played right into the hands of these... these outsiders. We're helpless. Utterly helpless. Well, our weapons might not work, but we've still got our fists. Yes, but you've never seen an Arconian. They might be eight feet tall. True. On the other hand, they may be only three feet tall. Here's where we find out. Well... You're wrong as usual, Spangler. He's not over six feet. Which one of you is Commander Corey? I am. I thought so. I am Captain Tokoja. And if you're thinking of using those weapons, remember what I told you. Commander, do what he says. They'll destroy this whole ship. Now, this man is quite sensible. That's another subject we disagree on. How does it happen we can understand each other without the translator? I'm wearing a small device into my clothing. It reproduces my voice in your quaint language. Also, it transmits the beating of my heart to a receiver in my ship. And if that heartbeat should stop, well, gentlemen, so will yours. All right, Hat. Put up the ray gun. We'd better not risk it. Paralyzer ray might prove fatal to an Artronian. Yes, sir. 
All right, Captain, what do you want? One shipload of Lutronium. I told you before I'd try to get it for you. Corey, don't argue. I can get him all the Lutronium he can load in his ship. Well, perhaps I should deal with this fellow. He's a criminal, an outlaw. If we handle this right, Captain, we can set up friendly trade agreements between your government and mine. Why not let me contact Arctrona? Sometimes I get very impatient with my government. And with all governments. No, Commander. If you were to contact Arctrona and tell them you were dealing with Captain Tekoja, they would be far from pleased. Oh. Then you're a crook by your own planet's laws, just like Spanglers here. Not quite like Spanglers. I have never been captured. There's always a first time to coach you, and this is it. Let go of me, you fool. Remember what I told you. If anything, quit to me. struggling and you won't get hurt. Now listen. Order your crew to cut off that inhibitor beam. I'm going to contact our crew. My crew, I warn you, if my heart stops... Don't worry, nothing's going to happen to your heart. All right. Stand back. Commander, look out. It's too late. Corey. Save a yard today. I got Corey's ray gun. Spangles, what's the idea? A moment ago, you wanted the commander to protect you from Tokoja. Yes, but I discovered Tokoja and I speak the same language. Captain, what shall we do with these meddlers? Take them aboard my ship. Then you and I will get down to business. Captain Tokoja, a space pirate from the remote planet Arctona, used an inhibitor beam to cut off the power of Commander Corey's spaceship, then came aboard. When Buzz defeated him in a brief scuffle, Tokoja meekly agreed to contact Arctona. Catching Buzz off guard, the captured criminal Spanglis knocked the commander down, seized his ray gun, and held Happy at bay. Joining forces, the two criminals are now guarding Buzz and Happy aboard Tokoja's huge interstellar ship and discussing plans for their evil partnership. That uh, small object in the view scope, Captain, that Jupiter's fourth moon. Well, that's where the latronium is. That's right. Along with a lot of other loot. But uh, whether the other stuff is worth hauling back to our drone, I don't know. I'll check it over. I can tell you right now, even a ton of latronium will be worth the trip. Oh, how many are in your crew? Just one man, Rin. You mean you and one other man can operate this big ship? Including loading? Yes. Rin will operate the gravity beam from the cargo hold. What's a gravity beam? Keep out of this conversation, cadet. A gravity beam is an energy field that can be focused on an object to lift it, push it, or pull it. Something like an invisible loading crane. Why, that's marvelous. Our drone must be a very highly advanced space. We can learn a lot from each other, Spanglers. Now, since Corey and the cadet are of no further use, suppose we dispose of them. Then I suggest waiting until we're out of the solar system, Captain. If we are intercepted by the space patrol, the commander may be useful. Excellent suggestion, Spanglers. For the time being, let's lock our prisoners up. We don't want them in the way during loading operations. Spanglis, Captain Tokoja sets a big interstellar ship down on the surface of Jupiter's fourth moon. Buzz and Happy, locked in a compartment amidships, look out of a small viewport where two men in spacesuits are inspecting stacks of crates. Spanglis and Tokoja are out there, so that means just Rin is left in the ship. Yes, Rin's in the cargo hatch getting ready to load. Uh, if we could break out of here, we could probably take care of Rin. Now, look, just beyond that rise of ground, it's a small spaceship. Where? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's partly camouflaged. From space, it wouldn't be noticed. There must be some sort of plastic covering. The same kind that's over those crates. That's yeah, a slick job at that. Oh, all this loot right out in the open. And we couldn't tell it was here until the ship was a few hundred yards above it. What's that? Rin must have started some of the equipment. Hey, look up there. One of the crates is rising straight up in the air. The gravity beam, Hap. It's pulling the crate toward the ship. Wow, the crate must weigh an earth ton. Floating on the beam as steadily as if it were held by cable. Looks real spooky. Now the crate's in the cargo hatch. But that gravity beam, it won't take long to load this ship. Shall we try breaking out of here now, sir? Now wait till the gravity beam starts again. The sound will help cover the noise we make. Yeah. Spangless and Tokoja are busy pulling that camouflage material off the crate. All right. Let's see if we can spring the door with this metal bar. Yeah. Yeah. 
I wonder if Rain heard that. Listen a minute. The gravity beam's still on. Okay, try it again. Hey, he must have heard that. He hasn't stopped working. Now, before we tackle Rin, we'll search the ship for weapons. Let's go forward toward the control section. Yes, sir. Now, wait, Hap. Check this locker. There's nothing here that looks like a weapon, sir. Just some spaces. Thanks, sir. Then you won't need to tackle Rin. I don't get it. Rin isn't important. He wants Spangler and Sokodia. In the spacesuits, we can tackle them and get to the other spaceship. Sure. And alert the space patrol if we have to. Right. Here, we're on a strange ship. Even if we can handle Rin, we're on unfamiliar ground. Get on the suit hat quickly. A moment later, Buzz and Happy are in Arctronos spacesuits. Experimenting cautiously in the airlock of the ship, they get the spacephone transmitters at low power. Carefully, they emerge from the ship. Several yards away, Spanglis and Tokoja are busy selecting crates for Rin to lift into the ship with the gravity beam. Taking advantage of the rough terrain of Jupiter's fourth moon, they crouch low, working around and back at the two criminals. Buzz is holding a weapon he found in the control compartment. Keep down, Hap. Yes, sir. As close as we can get without being seen from the ship. When I motion, rush them. Okay, Commander. Get ready. Rin's got a big crate in the gravity beam. When it disappears inside the ship, we'll go. They're behind some crates now, sir. Maybe Rin won't even see us. Well, they'll have a yell over their space phones, though. Ready now, Hap. Let's go. Goja. Look. That's funny. Those are our trauma spacesuits. I thought you said no one was aboard your ship except Rin. It's Corey the cadet. They got loose. Rin, our prisoners are loose. Do something. That's enough to call you. Just shut up and get moving toward that other spaceship. He's got a gun. Corey, be careful with that. You don't know how to operate it. By the way you're acting, it might be pretty dangerous. Keep me from experimenting. Do what I tell you. Spanglish, do as he says. If he pulls that trigger a certain way, we're finished. All right, Corey. We'll go with you. Just be careful. Commander, Spanglis must have had it stashed here for an emergency. And this is it. 
Corey, if you blast off, Red can bring you down with the inhibitor beam. He can cut your power and you'll crash. We're taking that chance. A tangent blast off might keep us out of beam range. I've checked the control panel, sir. The ship's secured. Now take this weapon and watch the Koja. We can raise our face pieces now. Yes, sir. Now, we'll head back to the sector of the Jupiter orbit where Tokoja left our star drive ship. How about contacting Space Patrol, sir? That Spangler might intercept the signal. Our best bet with this little lunar job is to keep out of sight. Ready, Hap? Yes, sir. Close port. Fire jet. Fire jet. Stop chipping away. So far, Commander. Now keep scanning, Hap. Listen to Koja. Are you telling the truth? Are we on the approximate vector? As far as I know, yes. After all, I don't know your solar system very well, Commander. Maybe a space patrol ship found the Terra 5 in free fall and picked it up. Well, you may be right, Hap. We'll risk a space patrol call to Jupiter Space Control. Commander, the rear view scope. There's a ship on our tail. Yes. A big one closing in fast. Uh-oh, I was afraid of that. It's an Arcona ship. It's red. You're all washed up, Corey. Right, sir. Wonder how they found us so quick. Spangler probably figured we'd try to find Terra 5. <laughs> Commander, there's our ship. See in the forward view scope. You're too late. My ship will overtake you before you can reach it. And even if you do, you'll be helpless. The inhibitor beam. Commander, what are we going to do? There's nothing you can do. See, Rin's gaining on us. One thing's sure. They won't get very rough because they know you're aboard, Dakota. We'll just let them try to take you. Rin can take this cruiser back to our corner, attached to my ship. Once your power is cut off by the inhibitor beam, the battle is over. They're getting awfully close, sir. I know. That inhibitor beam is quite a powerful weapon, Tokoja. I suppose you stop a lot of your own Arcona ships with us. No, Corey. Not our ships, unfortunately. We devise other means for them. Corey, this is Spangler. Aboard Tokoja's ship. Play it smart and surrender. Tokoja, you're going to tell me how to neutralize that inhibitor beam, or do I have to pound it out of you? This isn't an Arcona ship. Now quit stalling. Electronic signal of some kind. It must be. What frequency? Cut your rockets, Corey, or we'll use the inhibitor. Let's have it, Dakota. I don't have to get rough. What's the frequency? All right, Corey. Rin, turn on the inhibitor. I'm warning you, Dakota. I tell you, Corey, I, I don't know. Commander, our rockets are out. You better remember, Dakota, what's the frequency? Oh. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. It's 678.3 megacycles. Get that half? Set our space phone transmitter to 678.3. Hurry. Yes, sir. Dakota, this is Spangler. We'll have you aboard this ship in a few minutes. I've got it set, Commander. Frequency better be right, Dakota. Right. If it doesn't work, your power's too low. See, Commander, we're too late. The inhibitor beam cut our power down. There's no energy to fight back with. There's only a spark. It might build up. Oh, that ship's getting awfully close. It's, it's working. It's working. Our rockets are firing. Wow, we're leaving another ship behind. Ah, watch the Koja. I'm going to contact Jupiter Space Control. Commander Corey aboard Lunar Space Cruiser N-159 calling Jupiter Space Control. Send all available units to Sector H-7. Jupiter Orbit. Emergency. An Artrona Star Drive ship is attacking. Commander, the other ship is gone. It vanished. He's been cut into Star Drive. He's heading back to Artrona. He's got Spangler with him. Cowards. They deserted me. Don't worry, Dakota. We'll contact Artrona. If they'll surrender Spangler, they can have you back. No, you don't like that, do you, Tokoja? I thought you and Spangler were so anxious for interstellar trade. Yeah, except the way he planned it, the rats were trading. Instead, we're trading rats. Ah! <laughs> uh, don't you think that's funny, Tokoja? Perhaps my translator is broken. Um, well, maybe it's just as well. Huh, Commander? Uh, yes, Hamid, it's just as well. <laughs> <laughs> Join us again next week for another thrilling adventure with Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander in Chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> Space 
Patrol, created by Mike Moses, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Helen Moser. Dick Tubell speaking. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Thank you.